Shake your boots, put on your dancing moves. No time to waste. Oh, ready, set, and go. Yay! Fire up the show. Oh, ready, set, and go. Let the good times go. When the night. Check your boots, put on your dancing moves. No time to waste. Oh, baby, set and go. Yay, fire up the show. Oh, baby, set and go. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Check your boots, put on your dancing moves. No time to waste. Oh, ready, set. Hey, folks, it's Bill Meeks here uh, of where I'm from that you're watching right now. Uh, well, today is a little bit of a special episode. You see, um, I just published the episode with Brian Brushwood all about Katy, Texas, where I'm from, <laughs> uh, and where Brian's from, too. And uh, I also was thinking that, you know, a couple of years ago, I did an interview with this woman named Karen Kay, who was the Fox 26 Kids Club host in Houston. It was for an old podcast I did called I Made This, where I kind of like retrofitted her into the subject matter. But I thought it was a lot more relevant here, so I thought it would be cool to release this uh, interview with Karen Kay as a bonus episode. I also thought it would be a really good idea to test out my uh, chat chops uh, with the live stream. If you, you can see down there, I have the chat going. Uh, so hopefully that will continue. But it is about an hour episode. Uh, if you have to leave, I understand. Uh, but I do hope you stick around. I'm going to be uh, on camera and in chat uh, trying to provide some levity and uh, some live commentary and hopefully interacting with YouTube, testing out the chat. If you're listening to this on the podcast, yes, we do a live version of this show. Go over to at Bill Meeks LA on YouTube. Or if you want to see the recorded produced version with the B-roll and everything and the, all the nice intercuts, uh, special music, uh, go over to at Where I'm From Podcast over on YouTube, too. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and play the episode here. If no one comes into the chat, like I said, I'll just be doing cool, kind of a cool, chill, relaxed commentary. Maybe I'll go get my dog Ziggy for a minute. And uh, just testing out that the chat uh, works well. If you guys show up and you ask me questions, I will answer them in the chat. And at the end of the show, maybe I'll come back too and uh, share some of those chat messages that uh, were given during the course of the stream. Anyway, this is experimental. Uh, it's mainly to get me used to the chat, but it's a really great episode with Karen Kay to a really great interview that fits right into the ethos of where I'm from. Uh, so with that, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and start the show. <laughs> so here we go. Welcome to Where I'm From, the podcast that proves no matter how far you go, you'll always keep a little piece of home with you. I'm Bill Meeks, and today I'm talking with Karen Kay, retired television and radio personality, about hosting the Fox 26 Kids Club on KRIV in Houston, Texas, where I grew up. Hi, I'm Karen Kay, and I made the Fox 26 Kids Club. 
For anybody not in their mid-30s, the Fox Kids Club was a marketing initiative by the Fox Network to promote the afternoon cartoon lineup, Fox Kids. Coming up soon, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is next. The club tried to make kids feel connected to and empowered by their favorite shows, much like Nickelodeon. You'd send in a postcard, and a few weeks later you'd get a membership card, which got you free ice cream and whatnot around town. In most markets, the Fox Kids Club was fronted by local hosts, and they'd respond to viewer feedback on the front page of the quarterly Totally Kids magazine. Karen was my local host, and I'm hoping I don't fanboy out too much during this interview. She influenced me a lot, including reinforcing my dream of working in broadcast television. Trust me, it's a thrilling episode. Take a listen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so pumped right now. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I'm pumped to be with someone who's pumped. It's kind of fun. Hasn't happened in a long time. Did you, did you ever imagine you would connect with a Karen K super fan? <laughs> um, not for years, no. <laughs> I can't say never, but not in a while. Let's get a little bit about your background here. So how, how did you get into broadcasting in general and what path led you to the Fox Kids Club? Um, I majored in journalism in college. I went to Texas A&M and mm -hmm. studied journalism. I originally thought I might want to be an attorney, mm -hmm. but I realized after I went, I did go to law school for a year. Um, while I was in law school, I was also on Hit Video USA, which was a music video network that tried to take on MTV out of Houston, Texas, of all places. How, how'd they do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard of them? No. There's your answer. Hi, I'm Karen Kay. Sound standby. Join me every week for Hit Video USA's new music review. Life standby. We'll feature the best in new music videos, plus we'll talk to the artist to give you all the information you need to stay up to date. That's the new music review, Hit Video USA. Okay, I thought I might want to do, uh, I really wanted to do television, but thought I might want to do law. And I realized after several months of law school that if I continued on that path, it would be a bastardization of what I really wanted, which was an audience. I was thinking I would be a litigator, so I would have an audience of 12 plus a judge. Yeah. That's not quite big enough for me, as it turns out. No, that's not a really good spread. You're right. And as one of my law school professors pointed out when I wanted to drop out and a different professor was trying to convince me to stay in, my professor said to this other person, he said, you know what? She is in a job because I was at Hit Video at the time. He, he said she is in a job where people actually like her. Why would she want to stop doing that for this job where people don't like you? Lawyers don't necessarily have the best uh, reputation. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> OK, so I continued on the path and I did the Hit Video thing until they eventually ran out of money and let us all go. Mm -hmm. um, and MTV went on to be what MTV is now, which is no longer music television, but I digress. <laughs> uh, I got an agent in Houston and did some auditions for commercials and also did this audition for this Fox Kids Club thing, which they were starting at Channel 26 in Houston, KRIV. Mm -hmm. And they were hoping to find somebody who would be enthusiastic about kids eh, and enthusiastic about the whole um, idea of starting this club that everyone could be a part of, which I really did enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed it seemed uh, very inspired by sort of the Nickelodeon ethos, you know, uh, kid empowerment kind of stuff. Correct. And I think it might have actually predated all of that. I don't know that Nickelodeon was extant back in. I, I had to look it up because I couldn't remember. 1990 to 93. And I haven't looked up Nickelodeon, so I don't know. But I, the thing that we enjoyed about it and that I enjoyed about it was that it was a club that everyone could actually be a part of and join. Mm -hmm. And you, I don't know if you had a card, but- Oh, I, I had two. I think I had to order a new <laughs> one because I lost my first one. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you had a card and we, you know, I, I had a, a wonderful group of people that I worked with because I was really hired just to be the talent. Mm -hmm. And- 
um, I, I, I say I wrote my own stuff. It was ad-libbed mostly, but I did have notes so that I would have some basic idea of what I was going to talk about in between, let's see, Tiny Toon Adventures, and which was my favorite. Um, we had Batman. There was like a new Adventures of Batman. Yeah, Batman the Animated Series. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, see, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> when I auditioned for the job, there was at least one callback. And I remember at the callback, the woman who was to become my boss kind of pulled me aside after the audition. And she said, I, I can't really tell anybody else yet, mm-hmm. but it's yours. So I pretended like I didn't know until I got the actual <laughs> phone call. And I remember at the time jumping up and down on my bed because I was so excited mm-hmm. to get that gig. It was a, it was, it was awesome. And I did it for three years. Yeah, I, I, I will say that, uh, you know, that that whole like you have the gig, but don't tell anybody yet. They, like, I, I worked for a few years in television until very recently. And that seems to be par for the course. You know, all this stuff is happening for you. You can't say anything to anybody for six months because there's contracts and this, that and the other. That's it. Don't tell anyone. And yeah. I have to still audition all these other people because I told them that I was going to, even though I'm not really looking at them, which seems I mean, as talent, that's kind of unfair if you don't want to hire me don't have me come in and don't waste my time yeah do you know yeah. i mean looking at it from the the standpoint of all the other people who presumably had to go in after me yeah because it, it's a it's a you know a big enough uh problem you know all the rejection you have to face when they're actually considering you let alone coming in and just doing a show for no reason you know? right exactly right and the other thing is that you know that it's not really real until you get the real phone call. So I, I do remember I was jumping up and down on the bed and I was dating a horrible person at that time who said something like I was jumping up and down because I was excited. And he goes, calm down. It's not that big a deal. And I thought, ooh, he didn't last long. Yeah, I would imagine that was probably the the thing that broke the camel's back there. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So I, I, I worked there from 90 until 93. And when I left, I left which is somewhat unheard of in television, as you well know, I left because I had another job that I wanted to be doing. And I was moving to New York City at the time. Um, it, I didn't leave for another gig. I actually left for love. Mm. Um, but I moved to New York and it was not going to work out in those days to do a show in Houston from New, from New York. These days you could probably do it no problem. But at that point it was a, a deal killer. And I remember passing the baton to Tammy, who at the time had been a producer for at least the last year of the three that I was on the air. Mm -hmm. And then Tammy took over the baton from there. And I think it lasted maybe another year or so. And then the whole thing went kaflooey. Yeah, I I don't think I ever I ever saw Tammy because we moved from Houston uh, pretty soon after uh, Batman the Animated Series came on the air, actually. Uh, So I I, I, I love how that's your benchmark. It is. is, I mean, you know, there's before Batman the Animated Series and after Batman the Animated (laughs) speaking speaking of i if i remember correctly didn't you guys do there was some sort of like special night of programming or something where you dressed up in different costumes maybe or okay we did several there were several times throughout the year and throughout the three years that i was there where we did something and we showed long form programming at night instead of just the the short form 30 minute commercials i mean the cartoons during the during the day Mm -hmm. um I don't recall ever dressing up in costume, and I don't even think I did at Halloween. I know one year, one year, I had been bitten by a mosquito on my eyelid, Ooh. and my eyelid swelled up. And we used to tape a week's worth of shows once a week, so mm-hmm. we did the whole thing in one day. And on that day. I had a swollen eyelid and I didn't think that I could do the week's worth of shows looking like somebody might have hit me or some I had something growing out of my face. Yeah. So I brought a handful of sunglasses from home and we did sunglass week on the Fox Kids Club. (laughs) And every because so I taped a week's worth, I taped five days worth in an afternoon. So every day I wore a different every day, quote unquote, I wore a different pair of sunglasses and I put sunglasses on the animals because I had stuff. I sat on a chair surrounded by balloons and stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I had done on that day, which I recall, is I had taken a Benadryl. And I am very susceptible to all forms of everything. And by the end of the the week on the air, and by the end of the taping day in real time, 
I was really looped on the Benadryl <laughs> and I was so tired. The swelling had finally gone down on my eye, but I couldn't string together a sentence, which is problematic when you're doing a show. Oh, yeah. And it was probably a good thing that you were wearing sunglasses, too, with the Benadryl effect. Like, you wouldn't want the kids to think you were high or something. You know? well, I uh, yeah, no. And I wasn't. And I was um, I was a Girl Scout a perfect Girl Scout until long after I stopped doing the Fox Kids Club. So I could look a kid in the eye and not be lying and say, I have never smoked pot. Mm -hmm. I can't say whether or not you should, but I can tell you that I haven't. Hi there, my name's Karen Kay. You're watching the Fox 26 Kids Club. If you're a Fox Kids Club member, or even if you're not, I hope you've made plans to check out Fright Fest. It's going on at Astroworld starting a week from today. And actually, a week from tomorrow, I'll be broadcasting live at Astroworld. During Fright Fest, you can trick or treat at Astroworld on Fridays from 6 p.m. to 9, Saturdays and Sundays from the time they open until 6, and I have Fright Fest tickets coming up soon. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is next. So I, w why don't we go ahead and... Why don't you give me an idea of what your general work week looked like putting this together? Because you said, you know, you shot once a week. Yep. Uh, what Was it, you know, working with producers to kind of put together what that once a week shoot would be or? No, it was really, it, unless there was a special event happening, like a live from SeaWorld or a live from Astroworld or a Halloween special. So assume, so let's assume for the sake of this, that we're talking about a normal week mm -hmm. and a normal week. I would sit down with, in those days, we didn't have the internet. So I had a book of things that are, would happen on any given day in the week, like the day Swallows returned to Capistrano. <laughs> I no longer remember what that day was, but I had a book that listed all that stuff in it. And I would sit down and I would loosely script out what I wanted to talk about in each 30 or 60 second interval, adding in... Uh, every day I did birthdays, mm -hmm. um, every, every weekday I would do birthdays. So I would read through all the kids who were Fox kids club members who were having a birthday that day. And if there were a lot of them, I would only read the first names cause I only had 30 or 60 seconds to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I remember that I actually parodied that on my sketch comedy podcast, the fakest. <laughs> and I've seen it. And yes, I, <laughs> it was well done. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I watched a lot of them, so I had a lot to draw yes. from. <laughs> Well, you know, and it was, I mean, I just kind of rattled them off. It's just what I did. Um, and I was always appalled when I was in school and the teachers would mispronounce someone's name. Mm -hmm. I may well have butchered people's names, but I certainly tried very hard to get them right. Um, but so I, I would sit down with a, with a yellow pad and write down loose ideas for, I'm trying to remember how many breaks we had a day. Let's see. I think there were there were three or four shows in the afternoon block, and I think it changed between fall and spring. There were more cartoons in the fall than there were in the spring, so I had an extra break. Mm -hmm. um, and I would write down, you know, during this break, I'm going to talk about the swallows returning to Capistrano. This break, I'm going to read birthdays. Um, we always had a word of the day. And on the word of the day, I would get dumped with confetti. They wanted to use slime. <laughs> and... At the time, I was horrified at the idea of using slime. I'm actually glad that I was horrified because I'm sure they would have expected me to pay for my own dry cleaning and or laundry. And um, I, I am perfectly happy not to have had to pay for that. However, I think it would have been cool if I had been slimed. It would have been nice if I had felt a little more comfortable with that. On the other hand, <laughs> because we used confetti, for years afterwards, I mm -hmm. was finding confetti in my shoes. Oh, wow. Because wow. I would get dumped with a lot of confetti every mm -hmm. week and, and, and actually every, you know, five times a day on a taping day. So I would do, I would do show prep for, I don't know, a, an hour or two hours or three hours, however long it would take me. And then I would go in on, it was either Thursday or Friday mornings. And I think we taped from maybe 10 until one, um, but no, the, the show prep was pretty much on that part of the show prep was pretty much on me. The, what my producing team did, um, they answered letters from kids. They had me sign a lot of pictures, but they wrote all, they wrote a lot of, uh, answers. Uh -huh. Um, and they made sure that, um, the, the cartoons would run properly. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. That's important. It was very important because really I was there to be essentially a VJ for cartoons. So it was really about the cartoons. It wasn't about me. I'm not sure that I ever internalized that until much later, but. 
So that's one thing that's already disappointed me about this conversation is that you didn't actually respond to the letters. Well, I did some. And I actually, I have to tell you, I actually came across a cache of them probably three or four years ago that I still have. Oh, wow. I did respond to a lot of them. I didn't respond to all of them. And I can't, honest to goodness, I can't remember. I think at some point it, it got to where I had so many of them that I, I was being paid a very small amount of money to do that particular job. And that's not a complaint. It's just what it was. Yeah, that's the reality of television. You know, you, you were like on the same level that uh, I think they're called street teams are now at a lot of television stations. So, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think it was $17,000 a year is what I was being paid. And I was on TV every day. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I didn't work every day. But I I was on television every day and I got it got to the point where by the time I left Houston in 93, I I, if I left my house, I would be recognized once. And on some level, I mean, today it's a completely different world with the Internet being what it is. But on on some level, I, I felt then and still feel that that you should be compensated for that. Oh, yeah, because that uh, puts a huge burden on you in your personal life, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I had to behave. Not that that's so terribly difficult, but I I felt, and I still feel, if you're hosting a kid's show, I think you need to be held to a different standard than somebody who's ho- who's who's like hosting a Howard Stern show. And mm-hmm. by the way, I'm a huge fan of Howard, so <laughs> let's not let's that's really important. But let's but, not get it twisted. No, exactly right. I think he's a genius. But there is a different level of responsibility if you're doing a show for kids. Mm -hmm. And, and I took it very seriously. And so it seemed to me at the time that there should be some additional compensation for that. Um, but no, but at some point it got to where there were so many letters to answer that it would have taken up a disproportionate amount of my free time answering letters from kids. So no, I did not answer all of them. I think the more generic ones I didn't that like never got to me. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the less generic ones I did get. And some of them, as I said, I still have, I don't remember where they are now. We've moved several times since then, but I still have a few and I've actually, because it's the internet age now, I can look people up. It, which is creepy. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, it, but it's kind of, but I mean, you're curious about what happened to people you knew from way back when, right? I, I Googled Karen K, so I really can't say anything. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, did, did you answer, and, and this is just for my own personal gratification, did you answer the ones uh, that appeared in the Totally Kids quarterly newsletter thing that went out? You know, I don't know. Mm. I I honestly, I came across a bunch of those too. Is Was yours one of those? Yeah, mine was one of those. So if I go through my Totally Kids quarterly newsletters, do I see a letter from you in there? Uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't be from Bill Meeks, though. It would be from Billy Meeks. Okay, I'm going to Billy look. Meeks and Katie. All right. I will look. I will report. Do you have a copy of it? I do not have a copy of it. Okay. If If I find it and I can, if I, I know where it might be. If I come across it, it, it's yours. That would be fantabulous. I can make that happen. (laughs) Assuming that it still exists in my house. And as I said, we've moved several times, so it may take a little while for me to locate it. But if I can locate it, it's, it's all yours. That's, you have to sign it though. You have to sign it. Okay. (laughs) Okay, I will. (laughs) Perfect. For you, okay. You know, I was a huge fan. I watched you literally every afternoon. I was this weird little nerdy, uh, kind of overweight eight-year-old in Katy, Texas. Okay. I uh, homeschooled, so I didn't have a lot of friends. But a friend I had every afternoon was Karen Kay, uh, where she would... I came into your living room. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you'd, you'd watch my favorite shows with me, and you'd talk about them in between, and it w- it was great. So, you know, I was super engaged with uh, what you put out in the Fox Kids Club. I wrote to Totally Kid, Kid or yeah, I think it was Totally Kids. Yeah. And uh, you, you published my letter and then I got the, the thing. And then a couple days later, you said on the air that you were going to be doing an appearance at Famous Footwear in I forget where in Texas. But uh, and I was like, I got to go because she read my letter. So I should meet her and say hi and thank you and everything. Yeah. And my, my mom and my sisters took me there and they were like ribbing me the whole time because they, they were like, it's like a crush. And I'm like, it's not a crush. It's just like I'm like, I'm fascinated. That this person on TV talked back to me. <laughs> so they they were making fun of me like the whole way there. And I got really 
hyped up and nervous. And we got there and I walked up to you. I talked to you for about 30 seconds and I, I had a, bu- a big list of things I wanted to say to you and I, I couldn't get them out. And so I just kind of like wandered around the back of the store for 20 minutes. And then I was like, come on, mom, let's go. <laughs> Please tell me I was gracious and lovely to you. You, you were great. You were great. It was, it was all me and my nerves and, you, you know, them making fun of me on the way to the store and everything that caused it. But yeah, you were great. Aww. You know, let's talk about those events a little bit. Cause you know, part of your job was, uh, you know, getting out there in the community and talking to super fans like me. That was a big part of the job. And, and actually I remember one year or one event, there was a line and I don't even remember, I don't remember where it was. I remember that there was a line around the block and they were there to see me, which was really bizarre for me because I don't have that image of myself. Probably a little weird for you, too, because, you know, you're putting this product together. You know, you're you're at the television station, you're you're doing everything kind of in there. And then you walk out into the real world and you're like, oh, wait a second, this is going out everywhere. Well, that's it. And, and part of it is so you and I are we're adults. Mm -hmm. So if we were to go together to a restaurant and we were to see Madonna, we would elbow each other and go, holy crap, look, it's Madonna. And one or the other of us might go up to her and say, hey, I really love your work. And then we would go away and we would sit down because we're grownups and we know how to behave. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're a kid show host, at least in the 90s, I have no idea what it's like now because of the Internet. But (laughs) in the 90s, you're a kid show host. and The kid sees you, the kid thinks to him or herself, oh my gosh, this is my friend who comes into my house every day and talks to me and hangs out with me and watches Batman, the animated series. Uh I'm going to go up and grab this person and attach myself to her leg because I know she loves me every bit as much as I love her. Oh. Right. Meanwhile, I am a, at the time, you know, 20 something year old kid myself, but not somebody who has children or particularly wants them. And I'm thinking to myself, why do I have this appendage, a barnacle? Why is there a (laughs) barnacle on my leg all of a sudden? And it's looking up at me adoringly, which is charming and cute. But at some point I want the barnacle to return to its parent. I viewed it as a responsibility Mm -hmm. to be as gracious as I could be. I realized that for some of these kids, I was a babysitter. If you were homeschooled, probably not for you because your parents were involved. Eh. Yeah. Okay, fine. They they (laughs) threw you in there with a book and said, here, kid, go read it. But there were plenty of kids for whom I was, I was the babysitter. Mom left me with them in the living room and I was expected to watch them through the TV. (laughs) I don't know how that worked. Um, And then I would meet them out in the world and they would be super excited to see me. And I, okay, let's face it. We all like being adored, right? Mm -hmm. So I appreciated the adoration. That was delightful. Yeah. I didn't quite know what to do with it because it came from children. It was unfiltered. Yeah. Yeah. The way that you and I would know better if we saw Madonna, we would know to filter it because neither of us is going to prostrate ourselves at her feet and go, oh, my God, I love everything you've ever done. You're the most. I mean, even if we thought that. Yeah. And you don't want to react the wrong way to and, you know, turn away this person who like looks up to you and, and completely skew their view. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I, I, I really liked what I did. I mean, I remember my standard refrain was it's a lot of fun and I'm rolling my eyes as I'm saying it because it just sounds so trite, but it was a lot of fun. I had a great gig. I got to go, I got to go backstage at the penguin exhibit at the zoo, which meant I got to go in and feed the penguins and pet them. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I got to do all kinds of cool stuff like that, that I would have never been able to do. And I got, and I felt like I was doing it as a representative for the kids. Like I'm taking you with me. Let's go see what they feed the penguins. Oh, look, they eat fish here. I'm going to feed one. I granted it's not as cool as you feeding one, but I'm doing it sort of as your, as your rep. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you coming up to me to say hi and thank you is your way of saying, gosh, thanks for doing that. And I, I liked, did I like those appearances? I did like those appearances. They were a lot of work because I had to be super chipper for however many hours, regardless how of, of how I might have been feeling that day. Oh, boo hoo. That's what happens when you're on TV and you're famous. So get over it. That's what you do. 
did, did you ever feel like, you know, as someone in your 20s uh, living in a big town like Houston, that that responsibility you felt uh, impacted, you know, your ser- social life or your personal life? Like you, you felt like you couldn't, I don't know, go out to a club or something like that. The short answer is no, because I don't have a big wild streak that I felt the need to get on. Yeah, I I would go to nightclubs if I wanted to. Um, there is no video of me, um, you know, drunk at a nightclub or pass out because that's never happened. Like that's just it's I'm not wired that way. Um, so even if the internet had been around in those days, that wouldn't have happened. Um, I sort of, I run kind of squeaky clean. So it made me a good, naturally made me a good kid show host. I did feel, a re- again, I felt a responsibility to behave myself mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I was, I was the Fox Kids Club host. So here's a fun story. So near the end of my tenure, um, I had gotten a, a job because as has been established, I was not being paid a tremendous amount of money. And I was only on, I was only working really one day a week. So I had free time and I was allowed to do commercials because that was what my contract stated. And I went and I did a commercial for a mattress company sitting on the side of the mattress in a, in a, um, a workout bra top. It, there was nothing salacious about it. Okay. But I was sitting there and I was doing arm curls bicep curls with a mattress and I or with the mattress, I was doing bicep curls with a weight sitting on the mattress and talking about, I don't know how glorious the mattress was. I, I actually, I don't remember the spot. I really wish I had a copy of that one because <laughs> um, I'd like to see if it actually was salacious at the time. I didn't think it was. Mm-hmm. And I was told that I was not allowed to do that spot after having done it Ooh. and they pulled it. Mm. I was, I was paid, but they, they did pull the spot, um, because they felt that it did not meet with the standards of whatever the Fox kids club host should be doing. Yeah. So was it a commercial that was produced by your in-house commercial production team or no, it was a, it was an outside gig that I had to go audition for, oh, but wow. I didn't have a, I didn't have any kind of a contract that said I couldn't do anything else because they weren't paying me a lot of money. And I, you know, I don't think they viewed me as that big a deal either until all of a sudden I went and did this other thing. And then they thought, wait, hmm, maybe that isn't what we want her doing. We're not going to mm-hmm. pay her any more money, but we won't let her do this either. Yeah. Um, but that was, so I, there was that. And there was also at the, uh, also at the end of my tenure and it was, it dovetailed with the commercial I got a job working for a radio station startup in Houston, um, KKHU. It is no longer extant. In fact, it died shortly thereafter. I think it's a religious station now. But they went FM talk. Mm -hmm. And I went and asked permission before I did it because my, my logic was, you know, I'm on TV, whatever, from three to five in the afternoon. And this radio station, they had me on middays. So I was on 10 to 2 or 10 to 1. I don't remember. When kids are in school. When kids are in school. And there's no, um, I'm not on the air at the same time. So I'm not breaking the the fourth wall. I'm not saying, hey, look, I'm not really here. It looks like I'm there. And then I go from one job to the next. Yeah. But the the subject matter was uh, more adult. Um, I think I did a show one day about condoms. And um they were very unhappy about that. Um, mm. And they actually tried to make me quit. And I had a friend at the time who had a friend who was a lawyer in Los Angeles. And it was like L.A. Law. I, that's a dated reference, but it's the best one I can come up with. It was <laughs> what, you know, some legal, famous legal firm where everybody's beautiful and they represent rich and famous people. Uh, of which I was neither. I guess I was sort of famous in Houston, but not on a global scale. Um, but they re- represented people who were a good deal bigger than than me. And he went to bat for oh, me. Oh, that's amazing. And so I was allowed to keep both jobs. But they they did, and I did too. I had a, I felt like it was important that I represent myself in a way that would um, cast me in a good light for kids. But again, I was on the air from 10 to 1 when the kids were in school. Mm -hmm. So I figured, you know, me talking about condom usage was not, I wasn't advocating for for anything one way or another. I was. Yeah, you weren't saying go out there and use condoms, kids. No. (laughs) (laughs) 
it's funny. I, even talking about it now, I'm like, should I be saying this? I don't know if this is okay. I, I don't host a kid's show anymore. I can pretty much say anything I want. <laughs> we do have a quick ad to play. So we're going to play an ad from our sponsor, and then we'll be right back. Where I'm From is brought to you by Stream Studio. That's S-T-R-E-A-N-N Studio. The web app that puts you in charge of the live show. Stream Studio allows you to take your streaming game to the next level by allowing you to stream to multiple platforms at once. If you want to go to Twitch, if you want to go to YouTube, you can stream to all of those platforms at once, get feedback from your audience, and most importantly, it puts you in control of the show. Now, Stream Studio has several packages that work for just about any type of broadcaster. From the free plan, where you can stream with a watermark, all the way up to the gold plan, where you can have up to eight guests, you can stream to as many social platforms as you want, you can get a web link to share your show with external audiences, and you can even get an iframe so you can embed your live stream show directly into your website. Hey, I love Stream Studio so much, I'm using it to produce this show. I want to thank Screen Studio for supporting where I'm from, and you can give this fantastic software a spin and support where I'm from at the same time. Just head over to our website at billmeeks.com slash where I'm from and click on the Screen Studio banner so they know we sent you their way. And we want to thank Screen Studio for sponsoring Where I'm From. Kids, which are the shows you chose for the Fox Kids TV Takeover? The suspense is killing me. Find out Thanksgiving weekend. Could it be the terrific Tom and Jerry Kids? Stupendous Super Day, the exciting X-Men, Delightful Dog City, The Brilliant Bobby's World, Marvelous Mary Melodies, Boisterous Beetlejuice, Excellent the Cat, Tasty Tasmania, Breathtaking Batman, the Animated Series, Law, oh, the Tantalizing Tiny Toons, Stone Terror. Watch the Fox Kids TV Takeover Thanksgiving weekend on Fox. You mentioned uh, liking Tiny Toons. Did did you watch any of the other programming or were you a fan of any of the other programming? Not really. I didn't not like it, but I didn't seek it out. Although because I didn't work during the day, except for the one day a week that I taped, I was home and I would sometimes hang out and, you know, watch the cartoons and watch myself. Um, in, in part as a diagnostic to see, you know, gee, do I need to blink less or blink more or wear more blush or that's a bad shirt. Watching the post game film to see what you can change for that's the next exactly time. That's it. I mean, like yeah. you listening to it, like you listening to a podcast that you've just done thinking, gee, should I have done this differently or could I do it differently next time? Flash forward to four hours from now, I'm going to be listening to it on a drive. Uh, this one that we're recording right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And, you're gonna, and, and you'll take notes for next time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it was that kind of thing. Uh, so did, did uh, you know, your lack of knowledge about the shows, did that ever impact these live events you would do? Like, did, would the kids come up and be like, hey, Eek the Cat did, did something crazy. What do you think about that? Uh, no, it didn't. I will say I probably ha was better versed in it. Um, if you asked me at the time what shows we were airing, I could have told you. Mm -hmm. And I could have told you the basics of it. I couldn't name most of them today but at the time I did know them and I and I knew the basics and mm -hmm. I was able to you know I I can I can riff along with the best of them so if you said the cat did something amazing what do you think about it well I thought that was fabulous what did you think Bill oh and you flip it back on yeah. me and then you that that's how I deal with because I have a terrible time remembering people's names I'll I, always just kind of try and find a way to flip it back on them or avoid the subject entirely I I, I don't know your name but don't don't Press me on it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know your name, but I remember faces. You can always use that. That works well. It, uh, hey, buddy is always really good, too. Hey, how's it going, man? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Do you remember what the guidelines were for the Fox Kids Club? Like, what things you were supposed to, like, do as a, as a representative of the Fox Kids Club from on high from corporate? Um, no, I don't think anybody ever said anything except uh, until the moment that I had gotten this other job that they didn't want me to have. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone had anything for me. They assumed in, uh, not incorrectly that I was going to go out and behave myself if I was out in public. Um, and that I thought it was a cool enough gig that I would, wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize it. We were supposed to plug the television shows, um, plug the content if it was relatable to something that we had going on. Um, 
We occasionally, as I mentioned before, we occasionally had evening events where we would show, like at Thanksgiving and Christmas, I think we would show a long form like Scooby-Doo. There was some kind of a Scooby-Doo movie that we showed a couple times. Um, and we were supposed to plug that sort of thing. But no, there really wasn't. If there was anything from corporate, my boss, God bless her, absorbed it and kept it from me in, in the best way, you know, in the way that you want to, that, that they allowed me to go out and, and just be a show host. Yeah. And just focus on what you had to do. That's it. And we were a huge show. I, I'm not a TV ratings person. And at the time I was again in my young twenties, so I really didn't know squat, mm -hmm. but I had a friend who knows a great deal about television and who mentions often enough that I will mention to you, we were a Fox O and O and we beat Oprah. So we were a big effing deal. I just didn't really know it, which is probably good. But yeah, we beat Oprah. Pretty, I, she, she was popular for a second there. She was just for a little bit, you know, she was doing okay. Just for like a decade or three, something like that. Yeah, exactly. Six Flags Astroworld is Texas' largest entertainment complex with Texas' largest collection of unique world-class roller coasters like Texas Cyclone, Ultra Twister, and Mayan Mindbender. So, Houston, I, I know uh, I know you got a chance I, in an official capacity to go to Astroworld a lot. Yes. Um, did, did you enjoy going there personally? And if so, what was your favorite ride? Astroworld is the Six Flags Park that closed down uh, in the early 2000s, I think. I think that's right. Um, I did enjoy going to Astroworld. I didn't go a ton because it was expensive, frankly. Yeah. Um, but I, I liked it. I do not like roller coasters generally. Mm. I would do them for work. So I have been on them, but it was always with a camera on me or a, in that capacity. I like, I don't know, uh, the, Him the Himalaya or Himalaya it's the ride that goes around and around and around in a car and you go up and down a little bit, but you're on a track. It's like a roller coaster that just goes in circles and kind of makes you dizzy. Oh, like bobsled kind of rides. like that. Yeah. I like those and I like the tilt-a-whirl. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours? My favorite and my the first roller coaster I ever went on actually was the Ultra Twister. Oh. It, it was like it, it went up 90 feet. And then it it drops you, uh, it dropped you the like forty five or fifty of the feet, and basically it was on these weird rotating tracks to where the car would spin you upside down the entire time it was going straight. Oh my gosh, that sounds awful. Yeah, so it would go <laughs> it would go like one hundred and fifty or two hundred feet down, and then it would lower you down to a lower track and then take you backwards, spinning you. Oh wow! So very intense, very intense. No, not my not my not my speed. <laughs> Not my speed. I like. I enjoyed SeaWorld a lot, which we did again with the Fox Kids Club, mm -hmm. um, and we did do Astro World every year. At we did Fright Fest every year at Ast and every year at Astro World at Halloween. I know there's a video on YouTube of me getting splashed by some belugas, beluga whales that happened at Six Flags. Yes. And I say the word really far too often. Every time I watch it now, I want to go back and edit it. It's just terrible. Yep, that was live. Live on tape. I'm going to win the presidential election. Karen, whenever you're ready. All right, I'm ready. They look great. Let's, let's do it. Beetlejuice is next, right? You're back with Karen Kay on the Fox 26 Kids Club at SeaWorld of Texas. Now, I'm here in front of the beluga whale tank. Oh, really? Really? There are eight of these guys, and they're trying to invite me to come to the pool with them, and soon I'm going to, really. Um, now, there's a pregnant mommy, and I'm not really sure. <laughs> You mentioned SeaWorld. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, has, has your opinion on SeaWorld changed in recent years? Go figure. And my opinion on zoos and a lot of other things. Yeah. Yeah. It would it would be very difficult for me to do that today and think it was OK. I'm not really sure how I could. It's interesting because uh, we have a SeaWorld here in Orlando and, and we, we do have passes. But it does seem like, you know, after all that controversy and everything, they're really trying to lean far, far away from the marine life stuff. Well, you, you know, you start to think, and the belugas, as when I watch it now, those guys are really smart. And 
I feel badly for them today. I feel like they would probably just like you and I want to be able to live our lives not in a glass cage. They probably would like the same thing. It's a complicated issue, too, because, you know, SeaWorld as a company for decades has done so much to help marine life and everything and save them. But at the same time, you know, the caging and the making them do tricks for everyone and stuff. Yeah, obviously not very humane. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, you can shut down your profit center, which is going to take away from your money you use to actually make a difference. You know, That's exactly it. It's a, it's a sticky wicket. I am glad that I did what I did when I did it mm-hmm. um, and didn't have any of those ethical dilemmas. Because, you know, when you're 21, 22, 23, you know everything. I certainly did. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And you know that your opinion is the correct one. Yeah. Yeah. And no one can tell you any tell you any differently. No, there's no gray area. And then you get older and things shift a little bit. I'm like, well, I don't know how I would feel about that today, but I'm glad I didn't have to do that then. <laughs> okay. So we, we've talked a little bit about uh, why you left uh, Fox and Houston and all that stuff. So yeah. wait, why don't you fill us in on, on what you did after and, and where you are now and what you're doing in your life now? Sure. Um, I left. Houston and I moved to New York City. And while I was in New York City, I studied acting. Uh, It turns out I'm a very good host. I am not a very good actor. They are very different skill sets. And you can see this every year when you watch the Academy Awards, if anybody still does. And you see these people who you know are excellent actors doing a terrible job at hosting. Mm -hmm. That is because they are different skill sets. Yes. So I moved to New York. I studied acting. I did not get a lot of work. I also did radio while I was in New York City. I did a freelance fill-in radio up and down the East Coast, up and down the Eastern Seaboard. Mm -hmm. I moved to South Florida. I moved to Fort Lauderdale and worked for a radio station called WIOD for a while. And then I moved from there to Seattle with an internet startup that did talk radio on the internet in the days before the internet was what it is now. That was in 1998 and 99. Oh, when you were lucky to get like, just like a little minimal stream, you could barely understand. Yeah. Yeah. Ding! That's exactly it. And the idea was brilliant. We had uh, an internet radio station where we also had cameras on us and a chat room mm-hmm. and we took phone calls. So it was a talk radio show where one, you could see one another And you could see what people were typing in the chat room, which was a great idea. And it would be a really good idea in 2019 or 2020. In 1998, it was not an awesome idea because people didn't have the bandwidth that they do today. So in order for them to call us and keep the show going, they would have to exit the chat room, sign off on the Internet because it was a dial up connection. Remember those kids? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it was a whole thing, but it was a, it, that was the best job I've ever had. It was the most creative freedom I've ever had. The guys who started that station are geniuses. I don't know. They made tons of money on a video game way back in the day. And then they tried this internet startup, which ultimately didn't work after talk spot. Um, I did other talk radio. I moved to the big Island of Hawaii. I did talk radio in Vancouver, BC. And I now live in Asheville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I do no radio. I am very happily retired. I volunteer (laughs) at the airport in Asheville once a week with my small dog because they have a therapy dog program at the airport. So (laughs) it's a dog friendly town. And we have, I go to the airport once a week with my dogs and we talk to stressed out travelers. I travel a lot. This year, I try to do two new countries a year. So my new countries this year were South Korea and Iceland. And I also was in Japan and um, the UK. I have a friend who has property in Scotland and we went and visited her. Where's your favorite place you've gone? I'm pretty enthusiastic about South Korea right now. Um, I really like Singapore. Um, I, I really like China, although I haven't been to China in... Gosh, it's probably been five years, but my husband used to do business there. So we used to go quite frequently. The best man at my wedding is a Chinese national. So I, I, I speak a little Mandarin. Um, yeah, I, I, I was about to go down the path of like, it must be hard to like travel over there and all the restrictions. But if your husband did business over there, you probably, you know, knew the ins and outs and all that stuff. Yeah, he gave me a, a 
crash course in Chinese culture before I went the first time. So I knew how to behave and I didn't make an idiot of myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can do that anyway, but I, I was fairly well behaved. (laughs) Um, and after my first trip, I realized that if I was going to do any of the things that I really wanted to do, I would need to learn a little bit of the language. So I Mm -hmm. picked up enough of the language that I can get myself into a taxi and get myself around and ask how something costs. Is there any place that you want to go that you haven't gone yet? Like any place you're like dying to go? Oh, gosh, there's a long list. Um, Spain is probably going to happen within the next 12 months. That's tops on my list currently. I have been to Galapagos and would really like to go back. It's amazing to be walking along a path and have a sea lion in front of you that will not move for you and is not afraid of you and is also not threatened. He's not threatened by you, nor is he threatening you. He's just, that's where he happens to be. And you have to either step around him or step over Mm -hmm. him. You step around him, by the way, pro tip, (laughs) don't try stepping over the sea lion. Um, (laughs) the only, I will tell you the only place that I went that I am not eager to return to is, uh, India. We spent six weeks there. I really, really, really wanted to go. My husband had lived there in his young twenties, probably around the same time I was on the Fox kids club. And I did not fall in love with it. I've heard from other people I know who have gone there that it's just like it's very randomly restrictive. Like, you, you know, I, I think I think it was a, the person I'm thinking of. They got in trouble for like making out with their wife on a beach or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking, OK, I'm married. It's you know, this shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I thought this was all clear. It's uh. it's odd. The, the one thing that I like about going to other countries is I like spending a little time, A, learning your five phrases, hello, please, thank you, you're welcome, hello, goodbye, and learning a little bit about the cultural mores so you don't come off as the ugly American from a mile away. I haven't done too much traveling. I did get to go to Indonesia to shoot a web series for someone a few years back. And it it was kind of interesting to me to kind of get other people's image of America, like reflected back at you when you're talking to people. Sure. Yeah. I remember talking to this one girl and she was just like, so there are police everywhere, right? Like, you know, (laughs) sirens going off at all hours of the night all the time. And I'm like, no, it's not really like, well, maybe in New York City. Right. Exactly. If you're in the right city, sure. Maybe. So uh, I, I know you're you're happily retired. Uh, you're out of the broadcast industry for a long time now. Uh, but if someone was wanting to try and get into the broadcast industry today, what would you tell them? Would you suggest that they do that or try and do something else? Or if they were dead set on it, what would you advice would you give them? If somebody really wanted to do it, I would you got to follow your heart. I had a lot of people try to talk me out of it. And it was the only thing that I wanted to do. Um, I would not necessarily say that you have to major in journalism. You you might want to major in, oh, I don't know, anything that you want to major in. Heck, you probably don't even need to go to university, except that it's nice to be well-rounded because when you're on the air, if you're doing a talk show, you need to have, it doesn't need to be very deep, but you mm-hmm. need to have a rather wide breadth of things that you can talk about somewhat competently. The standard advice is to find a television station and intern for them and to do it free initially while you're still being compensated by your parents for being a human being. And (laughs) then at some point, hopefully you endear yourselves to the people yourself, hmm, multiple personalities, you endear yourself (laughs) to the people at the radio station or television station and they begin to start paying you. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the kind of job where if you really want to do it, you would in fact do it for free and you might want to start doing it that way. Um, I, my first boss, my first television boss, which was at hit video, I did audition for that. And she will tell you, although I don't really remember doing it, she will tell you that I followed her into the bathroom because I was so determined that she had no choice but to hire me that. I was not going to let her go. And as far as I was concerned, we were in mid conversation. So I fell into the path, (laughs) which I'm fairly embarrassed about today, but I'm also fairly certain she wouldn't have hired me otherwise. So you kind of have to be more persistent than you would be in other jobs. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how you navigate that 
today with the internet being what it is and with the signal to noise ratio being what it is. Yeah. But you just, if it's what you want to do, you like anything else that you want, you figure out how to get to the yes answer and keep going until you get it. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable persistence would be my, my advice. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, you, uh, the Fox Kids Club and another uh, broadcaster out of Houston, Dave Ward. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Mar Marvin Zindler, too. Uh, oh, sure. In, in a big way, you know, kind of gave me this dream of approaching a broadcast career. And it took me like 15 years into my adult life to to actually accomplish it. I, and, you know, eventually, you know, after four years, I decided, you know, maybe other things would be better. But like you said, it was a very long road to get there. Uh, and it took a lot of persistence. Uh, but ultimately, I found it super rewarding. And I, I want to thank uh, you for your contribution and making me, you know, walk that road for as long as I did. I'm honored I had anything to do with it. That's really <laughs> kind of you, Bill. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, uh, thank you very much again for talking to me. I'm going to let you go so you can go find that magazine and send it to me because uh, I, I really need that. <laughs> okay, I'll go look in the basement. I want to thank you so much again for joining me today. Uh, you guys out there watching, if you like the show, please consider going over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get a podcast and leaving us an honest review. It doesn't have to be five stars. I'd like it to be five stars. It could be three stars. Don't do a below three, though. That's going to hurt our average. You can also find links to everything we do with the show, the podcast, the live YouTube videos, the edited YouTube videos, and contact information if you want to write in and respond to what we said today at BillMeeks.com slash where I'm from. Well, that does it for this week. Uh, join us next time when I talk to somebody else about where they're from. See you soon. And for the live viewers, uh, who I'm assuming there weren't many, uh, if any, uh, thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope that I was able to add some value to... Uh, you know, sort of a rebroadcast of an old interview. Uh, that that would be my hope here. Um, I think I had a lot of fun in the chat. I tried to get Ziggy in here. He kind of bailed on me almost immediately, unfortunately. I apologize for that. But uh, I hope we all had a good time here. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.